Manor Lords is an amazing village builder that combines the best elements from some of my favorite games in the genre. Note that this is currently an early demo. You can actually download it right now, but there's some stuff that still needs polish, and some content is locked away. This game still has so much potential, and I'm happy to bring it to you. If you have played other village builders like Banished or Farthest Frontier, you're going to be familiar with the general feel of this game, but Manor Lords offers a sort of freedom that you don't normally see in the genre, particularly with farms and housing. We're going to have to get to that though. The game starts us off with a quest to work on other stuff first. We need to finish a few buildings to provide villagers with the basics and to prepare for more in the future. But let's ignore all of that to build roads, which connect buildings. These can be curved in this game, and it's done in a wonderful way that lends a charming yet authentic look. I'll go ahead and connect these starting supplies. It automatically bends around the buildings, it's instant, and there's no need for resources. Now that those are established, we can get working on the four buildings we actually need. The forager's hut can go in to gather those nearby berries for now. Unassigned peasants, which are here in the top left, will start building that immediately, as soon as I unpause anyways. The game tracks how much food I have up here, and it's telling me that I have four months worth. These berries will hopefully extend that. Next up is a logging camp that's gonna gather timber for other buildings. It can also go up here. A storehouse goes in nearby, which is unsurprisingly where lots of varied goods are kept. Although you do need a worker assigned there to actually haul goods over. And then let's join this all with roads. Oh god, that curve's so nice. And then put it in. Okay, and then we want to connect these. There we go. When this forager hut is done, as it will be soon. Hey, that timing worked really well! So right now there are no assigned workers to it. I'm going to go ahead and assign one. And then I'm also going to tell idle villagers, or idle laborers I suppose, so people that don't have jobs, to just work here instead. That final starting building is a granary, where food gets stored. Like a stockhouse, someone is going to need to be assigned there to work and start hauling goods over. Let's see, you can set a work area, so we're going to prioritize this stuff. I want to get rid of this wood right now. This is a nice view. There are some signs that the game is still in early access. The military and army tabs down here don't exist yet. There are underscores where they shouldn't be. And I do feel like there's a little bit too much waiting. Perhaps that's just an early game thing, or maybe every feature just isn't included in the game yet. The actual gameplay itself is nice, and this road system is so pretty. I just love how this plays out. Where they have these sort of organic paths from the buildings themselves to the nearby actual paths. It doesn't take too long for the initial buildings to all finish, and the quest completes soon after. So, from humble beginnings, we now have places to get some of the necessary resources, and now we need to actually give people places to live. And this is probably one of my favorite features in the game so far. First, we'll get going on that well. You actually need to tap into the groundwater, but thankfully, our villagers can see through dirt, and we place our well in the perfect spot on the first try. Now it's time for homes, and I love how these are done. Most city builders use set buildings, and Manor Lords does too for the most part. That granary has a specific size. It's blocky, fits in a grid nicely, and nestles up against other buildings really well. But blocky buildings plus curved roads will naturally lead to a lot of empty space. Homes in this game are not made as buildings. They're made as plots. You draw with four points, and this divides into building lots. Each arrow represents one home. You can make these places small and compact to fit a lot more in, but you can also make them a little bit larger. If you do that, these these sort of plus signs appear. These are extensions, which I'll get into once the first houses are finished. Let's go ahead and put these first two plots in with some. The lines here are straight, but they don't have to be. It's automatically going to bend to meet the curve of the road or other nearby buildings, and it does a really good job of it too. I'll build one here to show that once I have the actual timber for another home. We are doing better on food, mostly from those berries we've been harvesting. That shouldn't be an issue for a while, hopefully. There's the first home. No, wait, I thought it was done a little bit early. There's the first home. One, it just looks nice. Each one is this fence off area with a few different little bits like an outhouse, lean-to, and the actual home. Two, there's this nice screen for each burgage. This is how you build extensions. They allow workers to spend some of their time doing something else. I could put in a vegetable garden, although I don't have the tools to spare for this. I do have one that I started with, but I want to save that for a proper farm, not one little carrot garden. I could make a chicken coop with what I assume is some animal feed? Wait, no, I can't actually make that. I wonder if I need to upgrade the house, if I have to build a vegetable farm first and upgrade that, or if this is just locked away to during early access. I'll upgrade the home eventually either way. To do that, I'm gonna have to meet these different needs, each represented by a diamond. Green diamonds represent luxuries, while red ones are required for happiness. The yellow dot and food means that it's fulfilled, while the empty diamonds aren't, so we've got a long way to go. We've got enough lumber to instead build another housing plot, which gets nestled up into that triangle. You can see 
the plot bending expertly to what's around it without a single straight line. It completely avoids the need for a rigid grid roads and lets you use all of your space for something while also looking so, so nice. The final two houses we need for our initial villagers are just plain rectangles though. I wonder if there will eventually be a way to curve the plots without needing to have it bend up against a road or other building. That'd be really nice for houses like this, which are on the edge of the town. We are starting to run a little bit low on food, so let's go ahead and build that hunting camp near the deer they'll be going after on the far side of town. That's going to give us meat and some pelts we can turn into leather to fill both food and clothing needs. Add in a nice long road. No wait, actually this one gets curved. The final house gets finished, completing that second quest and giving us the third one. That's going to require a market, plus we need to upgrade a few of the homes. We do have food, water, and fuel now, but we need a lot more. Entertainment, clothing, religion, and food variety. It doesn't look like the hunter's given us meat yet, but they should soon. Let's get that market going first. Like house plots, you designate an area for this. Inside, you can then put in market stalls food, firewood, and clothing. Now all that's left is upgrading the houses themselves. Let's start with clothes. How do we go about securing those? Well, a tannery can turn pelts into leather, which should work. That's gonna go near the hunter's lodge. And if I check materials, I can see that I already have some pelts stored. Once these are leather, I assume that I can turn them into clothes somehow. We're starting to get low on food first though. Oh, actually that's not food, that's fuel. How do I get more of that? Okay, there's a place to chop firewood. That's also gonna go in on this far corner to avoid deforesting one area too quickly. I'm actually gonna turn off snap into the road Road, put it a little bit further back, and then add a connecting road in. Oh, that flexibility is just so nice. There's no rigid square grid system you have to adjust to and fit against. You just put it where you want and let these natural looking roads connect everything together instead. These housing plots aren't going to be so flexible though. They stay rigid. They're going in to make sure we have housing for any future villagers that want to join the best town ever. The tanner has finished turning some pelts into leather, so let's free up the villager that was working there. I am so low on workers, and I really need more joining up. That person can instead start chopping firewood to keep everyone warm during the coming winter. I'll also take someone off their granary so they stop transporting food and put them on the food stall. This keeps less food, but they should then give it to all those houses, freeing up work time for them and making the rest of the village more efficient. It also gives us the second yellow dot that means a need is being taken care of. There are a lot of traveling merchants coming through right now. Let me just zoom out to see them. Oh yeah, did I not mention this huge map? The game is not just a traditional village builder on some isolated plot of land with everything you need. I've got my town. You can see this intersection that looks kind of like someone let a drunk toddler ride a Y. If we zoom back out to the world map once again, that's where my town is. You can even see the roads and buildings we have there. On this gigantic map with all sorts of resources all over the world. If I didn't have wild animals for pelts, but I wanted leather, I could go to this nearby area and trade or invade them for access. Seemingly, anyways. Again, this whole game's early access, but in the full game, oh yes. There we go, there are new villagers. They will eat some of our food and burn some of our fuel, meaning that stocks won't last as long, but they're gonna go help around the village and we desperately need more hands. Let's build a church to welcome them. It'll fit really nicely right here. The food stall now has multiple kinds of food, so if I go to a house, there we go. It's got four types even. Now let's see, faith is gonna come from the church that's being built. We have one kind of clothing from the leather. I guess the houses make their own clothes from the material instead of having like a dedicated tailor building that actively turn leather into clothes. Entertainment's gonna mean booze, which feels like the longest way off. Well, both booze and more clothes are gonna require farms. The actual overlay has a way to see fertility for different crops, which varies. Though, what's emmer? Well, a farm requires a tool, which is that little hammer icon there. To make those, we need iron slabs. To make those, we need iron ore. There is a little mining pit here, but I'm not gonna build it yet just because that's a lot of manpower that we just don't have. We start with one tool and it doesn't degrade or need to be replaced, so I can use that for the farm instead. Flax for linen can go down by the road, while barley gets grown up near where we started. An actual farm building goes in the middle. After that's done, I can assign workers there and they'll work any nearby fields. Well, once winter's gone. Oh, huh. Villagers move into any plots you have immediately. Were they all just homeless on the border, staring through binoculars to see when we had vacancies? Wait, there's gonna be a- Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> okay, there's gonna be a talent tree of some sort, so you can specialize in what looks like gathering, transporting, farming, and industry, plus policies and productions. Oh my god, I can't wait to see where they go with this. Before winter ends, let's try visit mode. Although, do note that this says very work in progress. This feature lets you wander around in third person mode and see your town like a villager does. I don't think there's collision yet, right? Yeah, no, there's no. Uh, there's collision here, but not here. Let's see, can I go in in? No. Okay, yes. <laughs> okay, it did say very work in progress. Okay, it said very work in progress. So you're gonna be able to like wander your village, steal the villagers. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this. 
You can even see like what they're carrying. So that guy's got meat. So now if I hit escape, let's see, that was right around here. There's the guy with meat. Oh my God, look at this beautiful game. Winter's end is near and snow starts to thaw. Our farmers can start working the fields to give us what we need. And with spring, we've been here for a year, which means we have a new quest. We have to pay taxes? Can the 30 of us just rebel against the king? Okay, there's the tax collector building, but it's locked behind what I think is early access. This says it requires a medium village, but we are a medium village. Maybe I need to finish this next quest to build a tax collector? Well, we're working on that. The fields are being worked too. Right now, they're being plowed. The barley up here can't be used directly though. We're gonna need to build a malt house to actually turn it into, well, malt. After that, I'll put in a really long road around to join it to our network. Actually, I wonder if taxes are just supposed to end the demo. Like the game won't let you build a tax collector so that the game automatically ends two years after you start. The flax also needs to be processed in the linen at a weaver's workshop. The malt house is done, so I can start putting in a brewery to make actual booze from the malt, then a tavern to distribute it and let D&D parties have some place to meet. I am so addicted to roads in this game. Look at how their width naturally changes as villagers travel on them more and they join more stuff. Flax is coming along well, but it's destroying the soil fertility there. It was in the 70s or 80s at the start. I guess that means we're gonna have to leave this field fallow next season to get it back, or maybe we rotate with another crop. It's only the summer now, but we need to start getting more fuel and more wood for the winter. That's gonna mean putting more workers on gathering food and on chopping wood. We're decimating the local animal population though. It started at 40 deer and it's down to 19, although it was 17 just a moment ago. I think they're regenerating over time. I love systems like this that require you to be sustainable as you grow larger and larger. Oh yeah, food's gonna be real close. It's not like I can get more than this though. I think the new plan is just to upgrade the burgage plots to fulfill that quest, then get jailed for tax evasion before my starving villagers can revolt. Great plan, right? All right, malt's getting made. Now that gets turned into booze at the brewery, although that's gonna need a worker. Oh God, I don't really have enough people. I'm behind on everything. Okay, we don't need more malt, so I'll move them over. And then after they're done making booze at the brewery, I'll move that same person to the tavern. They're single-handedly gonna bring booze to everyone in the village. There we go. It gets finished without much fanfare, but the houses have everything they need now. I'll tell four to go ahead and get upgraded. Although that's actually gonna need a worker. Nah, you can do it. The ox goes ahead and has a little bit of fun while work goes down. It doesn't look like there's a third tier to upgrade to yet. Maybe in the full game? And what about the extensions? Oh, wow, there's a lot of those. Okay, yeah, early access for sure. I'm really starting to think that you aren't supposed to get this far. Visually though, these look great. They're a lot cleaner than the tier one houses and they have this lovely little stone decoration plus more variants between the houses. That's three upgraded, but it's not giving me another quest. Actually, it's not even letting me complete this one at all. This is definitely not something you're supposed to do. I guess I'll take pride in that as I get jailed for tax evasion shortly before everyone revolts. Yeah, this definitely is not ending well. There are no more berries since winter is so close and we're very close to starving. The deer population's even getting pretty low. Maybe I can buy food at a trading post? Please be included in the demo. I feel like we have a lot of food, but 30 villagers each eat one per month, so it's gonna go by pretty fast. I guess I'll at least put down 100 have to try and not starve, even if it means hunting the deer to extinction before winter's over. This windmill will grind grain, but I'm guessing that barley doesn't count for something we can turn into flour. Yeah, the windmill is not working. Unfortunately, task ID 52 is not gonna keep us from starving. We're just gonna have to hope that all that meat's enough and that all of our unmanned buildings aren't holding us back too much. Somehow, I'm starting to think that my strategy wasn't perfect in this game I've never played before, but I do think we're just barely gonna survive. My only real complaint as I presume we come to a close is that visual clarity is rough especially during the winter. It's really hard to tell what's my farm and what's my tavern or malt house or anything else. It's more realistic like this, sure, but it is a little bit annoying to deal with. But for a demo, it's great that my biggest issue is not being able to remember where I put stuff. That's the second you're done. It's time for the tax collectors to... not come? Wait, it's giving me a quest to build a fancy house in the middle of my village? Oh man, they're definitely gonna burn it all to the ground. Well, let's at least give them a nice place to drag me out of. Oh, I can't actually build one. Yeah, it's not letting me build it anywhere and says it's feature locked in the demo. I think this is as far as we're getting. Before everyone gets to starving and kills me for it, let's take one more walk through the town. Just look at all this. The nice neighborhood, the neighborhood that's still tier one. There are even animations for things like backpedaling. This game's just beautiful. It's gonna be something special. If you haven't yet, go wishlist us on Steam right now. Wait, no, go play the demo right now. Wait, no, like this video, then go do both those things. It's so fun. Sure, it's a little bit simple right now, but this vertical slice of the building just works. Plotting, curved roads, and nestling all join together really well to give you a freedom that you just don't get in grid-based games. While those might focus more on resource management, and this game hasn't really shown that off yet, this game's building and planning has a unique charm, and I can't wait to see what's gonna be there for the full release. Release.